PR, when done correctly, can raise the value of whatever you're doing. Hello and welcome to episode 204 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Mitch Carson, marketing and public relations expert to talk all about how real estate professionals can leverage media appearances to boost credibility and drive more sales. Throughout our conversation, Mitch discusses the process of building relationships with media outlets and offers tips for using that content for lead generation once it's been published. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story of real estate success or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new guests to inspire our listeners. And lastly, if you enjoy this conversation and want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents Podcast. We stream on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. All right, let's get on with our conversation with Mitch Carson. If you're interested in speaking with him about media exposure possibilities, be sure to go to getinterviewedguarantee.com forward slash meet with Mitch. I have a link in the episode description. Well, really the way I like to start everything out is if you could uh, introduce yourself to us a little bit, uh, tell us who you are and a brief background on you know some of the coaching and what you provide. My name is Mitch Carson. I operate out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, Having spent most of my life in Los Angeles, I moved to to Las Vegas because of the unique opportunity it offers clients. You know, so my background is I've been a professional speaker for multiple decades. I don't want to disclose exactly because you might think, oh, my gosh, let's get this guy some Geritol. Uh, (laughs) But I've been doing this a long time. And one of the the reason I chose PR is I'll I'll share a brief story, if I may, Michael. Yeah. There was something called 9-11 which most, I would imagine, a good portion of your listeners are American. And now all worldwide, that affected us. And on that particular day, I was enraged, like a lot of us were, about what had happened to the nation's capital and the World, Tra- I mean, the, the, uh, World Trade Center. All those issues came up, and the emotions were strong. And when emotions are strong, coupled with anger and action takes place. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the reaction isn't the strongest or the clearest. You know, it's like when heightened emotions are there, you may not think so clearly. And on that particular day, I was sat in the front of the TV, like all of us did watching it repeat and over and over and over again. And I had that image like, God, what can I do to help the victims? Mm -hmm. And later in the day, I went into my office and I walked up the stairs and downstairs was my showroom. I owned a an advertising agency, and one of the divisions was trade show displays. Another division was promotional products. And while I was walking up the stairs to my office, I noticed a roll of toilet paper with the 1040 IRS form on it that we had printed. It's like, okay, let's wipe out taxes. So I thought, okay, instead of that, let's wipe out Osama bin Laden. Let's put terrorism where it belongs on our our butts. So I then came up with this concept and I reached out to different suppliers that printed on toilet paper that I knew in the industry. And I said, how fast can you get in production? I believe I'm onto something. It's going to be quick and over even faster. Start fast and even faster. And I, I secured the sources and I started producing them, thousands of them. Then I hired, here's what I do know. When I have a challenge or a problem, I seek out experts. I don't try to do it myself. I hire carpenters. I, when I have a toothache, I go to the dentist who's trained. So at that point, I knew publicity a little bit, but not to the degree I do now because I've put in the long hours, the hard, I've walked the hard miles. So I hired the best of the best. And this lady was 10000 a month, which is the standard rate for a good publicist, usually on a six-month contract. She was honorable. She said, Mitch, this is going to be over before you know it. This will come and go. She was about ready to retire. I have to give her credit. Uh, the woman was honorable. She's not with us anymore, but she was an older lady, but she knew her stuff. She said, we have about a two-month window, so I'm going to charge you twenty grand for a two-month campaign. 
I said, okay. I didn't believe her. I thought it was going to last longer, but I came up with a whole line of anti-Bin Laden merchandise. Put his face on toilet paper, said wipe out terrorism. I created T-shirts with the devil chasing him with a pitchfork. I put his face on golf balls with the big red X on it. Uh, you know, there were an array of different merchandise. I used her as the leverage to get out to all the military PBXs. And back then, one of the fastest ways to market to people was not YouTube ads, Google ads. It was fax broadcast. So we fax broadcast all the newspapers and magazines and radio shows, TV shows around the world. We did a mass fax broadcast. It's, and also all the military PBXs where the military personnel go in and buy their, their groceries and their supplies. And we said, we have this available. It was a one sheet piece of paper, one sheet, faxed it out. She contacted, she sent all the faxes out to the publicists around, or all the uh, media outlets around the world. And within, oh my gosh, 24 hours, the phones, I had to hire a 24 seven phone crew. The phones were off the hook because of the power of publicity and to be known. And that forever changed my view of publicity. And I hired other publicists after because this lady retired shortly thereafter. I mean, let me just talk about the result. I was able to write a check to the American Red Cross based on the profits I made. I was also interviewed in Australia, New Zealand, all throughout Europe, throughout Africa. I was uh, interviewed in Asia. I was interviewed multiple places throughout the United States. And I got publicity that I never, ever imagined I would get simply because I grabbed onto something that was fast and trending and emotional. These are the lessons learned. You know this uh, with your background. It was emotional. So I had the eyeballs based on news jacking, piggy backing on something that was timely and not permanent. If I'm to liken that to something current, and I, I'll, I'll share about that, Michael, in a minute. In our current times, AI is the rage. When I, pro I produced the very first worldwide event on ChatGPT back in February of 2023 in Las Vegas, I had 563 people standing, uh, standing room only in the event that I produced for two days, covering ChatGPT and how to use it. I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew more than the rest because it was so new and I jacked the news. So I was able to, I used television, I used Fox broadcast and other stations, newspapers to talk about this as a vehicle to create that interest. And I had remarkable attendance. My ad spend was I would spend a dollar and I made $3 and 80 cents at the door which is unheard of in the events business. So I produced, I had a positive ROI, return on investment, which is quite difficult to do in the live events business, especially coming back after COVID. But it was a tremendous success. So it's PR, when done correctly, can raise the value of whatever you're doing. And if you can piggyback on something timely and news jack and piggyback, you have a better chance of succeeding. I'm careful with my words here, Michael, because I'm not saying guarantee. Right. No, no, no. I guarantee you'll spend money, but I also guarantee your results will be better than if you do nothing. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, so for our audience specifically, we have the real estate agents and brokers. And, um, you know, I think everybody you know, is well aware of the, the, the different types of marketings and things that people can do, the direct mailings and things like that. But uh, I'd love to talk to you about, you know, that publicity and getting their image out there in, you know, their local media and, and how, how much that can boost their credibility and visibility around their market. Well, great comment. And it's, and the discussion item is near to my heart because I'm, a former TV, I mean, I have my own TV show in Las Vegas on, on NBC that airs a half hour where I profile experts. And most of the experts come from outside of the Las Vegas area. We leverage the prestige of being the entertainment capital of the world in Las Vegas and get them on television, some interview on my show, 
and others interview on Fox, ABC, CBS, NBC, and the CW. Those are the five major networks in English. There are a couple Spanish ones, but I don't offer that. But people use that real credibility of network television. This isn't, you know, Joe Blow's YouTube channel with five subscribers. This is network television with the national, and in some cases, international branding opportunity of piggybacking on someone else's brand where they've spent hundreds of millions of dollars creating that brand value. You know, you're, and so it's essentially packaging them and differentiating them from all the others that do nothing. You know, to hand out flyers that have grammatical mistakes on them. Uh, you know, hey, I can market your house. Uh, you might miss a couple things if you don't have the right packaging. You know, and, and I think network television differentiates somebody in the following way. Television with those big logos is like wrapping yourself in a Tiffany box. And if you don't have them, are you Kmart, which is out of business? Or are you Target, which is a failed attempt to be something uh, uh, of great value and prestige? You're going to get what you attract. We've heard that. You go out on a you're dating a prospect as a real estate agent. And I come from knowing this. My mother was a realtor in Beverly Hills, California. So the most Tony market in the, in, in the country, possibly the world, everything is image. How are you going to convince Mr. Jones or, or Mrs. Jones, uh, I'm going to list your home and that you're going to do a credible job because the money in real estate, and the, the listeners know this, is getting listings. It's the listings is everything. You got a listing. You you know, so I, I, I know it's changed a little bit of, of late, but it's still the same game. Get listed, get your commission, wherever it is in the in the spectrum of commissions that are paid out. You've got the listings in your control. But you got to commit. You've got to convince Mr. Jones and Mrs. Jones that you're the best agent for it. And if you come driving up in a rickety old station wagon with bald tires and the car is dirty and you got, you know, aluminum cans in your back seat and they see that, are they going to be compelled or motivated to list their two, three, four million dollar home? I'm sitting in a six million dollar home right now in L.A. visiting my friend, uh, you know, and he, well, if he were to sell this, there's no way he's going to go with the rickety cans in the back seat. You know, you, you need to find somebody who matches what people expect to buy from. And I think packaging yourself with media is one of the greatest vehicles. Right. And so when it comes to that, and I know, you know, you've mentioned uh, on the network level, but even for, um, you know, agents like say where I'm at in the St. Augustine, Florida area, uh, you know, getting that publicity with the local Jacksonville news markets and the local, you know, on the local television shows, I think is really important and a great uh, vehicle to uh, build up that credibility. So kind of starting from the beginning, how do, what are some of the ways that agents can present themselves to those show producers or those journalists or, you know, the show runners to actually, you know, uh, make appearances on those shows? Well, I think you have to, it's called the Ascension model. And I, I wouldn't encourage somebody that has, well, first of all, you need to have all your social media tight today. At one time, it didn't matter. You need to have all of that tight because Google is a verb today. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a noun. It's not a company. You get Googled. Whether you like it or not, it may be ticklish. It's happening. People Google each other on dates. And if you want to motivate and ask for a date from a news outlet in the St. Augustine area, albeit a newspaper, which is a great way to start. Also, don't ignore the newspapers. People aren't giving them attention. That was a great vehicle for decades in our history. Those that have survived, utilize them. Offer to write an article for them. And if you can't write or writing's a challenge for you, pay a professional. Get the credibility, leverage up, because if you go after the hardest market in the world is New York, you know that. If you just blindly send an email out to the producer of uh, you know, Good Morning America saying, hey, I'd like to be on your show because I'm a realtor in St. Augustine, Florida, and I really know my market. 
They're going to, you're going to get deleted. However, you have been on Fox, NBC, ABC, the CW in St. Augustine. I don't know all the call letters of the local networks, but if you've been on TV in those markets, you have attached either screenshots or clips of you being there. Also in the local newspaper of the St. Augustine market, and it's got your face, your LinkedIn profile is filled out completely with a beautiful headshot. There's video footage of you proving that you aren't a flop on, t on camera. Your chances are increased. I don't ever tell any clients, I guarantee you to get you on in your local market. The only guarantee I offer is Las Vegas because they have to be vetted carefully. I media train them. They must be media trained because the biggest fear, it's a lot different in print and radio is somewhat more forgiving. But television, the clips are two and a half to four minutes. For a, and you've got to speak in sound bites, ums and rights, you know, like, all of that will get you blackballed forever. You delete all that childish vocabulary and manner of speaking. And that takes training. You have to eliminate all these verbal faux pas. And it's preparation. Preparation meets opportunity equals success. I was prepared for this interview today. I take everything seriously. If you have a media opportunity, this is a platform of media, and I'm going to respect you as the host to be prepared, understanding your market. Understand what the local television station is audience is. If it's comprised of retirees, I'm, I'm guessing St. Augustine, the demographic might be a little bit older. If it's an older market, let's say 50 plus, speak to that market. Either in written form, uh, you, you've got to start the process. Number one is taking action. And the better way is strategic action. Be ready to address the market. Understand who it is. We use the the, the term avatar a lot, whose message to market match. Be ready, be trained, and then you execute. And wear the your clothing to match the market. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and something you mentioned earlier um, with your own personal experience, that newsjacking idea. And I think that's a great um a way for uh, real estate agents to present themselves. I know, you know, so my personal background, I was a video journalist in the Myrtle Beach, South Carolina area. And uh, we dealt with, you know, that was from 2009 to 2019. And, you know, all kind of different housing markets or developments coming into town. And uh, anytime I got an email or a message from a local agent, you know, uh, pitching themselves for, you know, interest rates are changing, or if you need somebody to talk about this, um, I, those are, you know, regardless if they reached out to me or not, I was still going to have to produce some kind of a story on those things and having those experts to be able to talk to. And it was great having them reach out to me because then I didn't have to spend my whole morning trying to figure out who I was going to talk to. So Anytime something like that came up or, you know, even today, you know, with mortgage rates changing and all kinds of things going on, I think it's a great opportunity for agents to reach out to their local television stations, radio stations, newspaper, and offer themselves as those experts. I totally agree. And they're, hung believe it or not, they're hungrier for content than you are in, in terms of enthusiasm. They need you. Their job as booking agents, because one of my good friends in Las Vegas where I live, she worked for Fox for 13 years as their booking agent. They are hungry, but you have to be packaged correctly. The ultimate is television. Podcasting is great and upcoming, you know, but, but it's recorded. And if you're on live TV, you don't have another take. If I mess up, Michael, you're going to be forgiving. I can already see you're a kind guy and say, Mitch, we need to reshoot that piece. That's editing. Live TV is the ultimate platform. You have to be ready. You know this is a video journalist. Recording is easy. You can edit and delete or, oh, can I do that over? No problem. The CW is recorded. But to get on, uh, let's say, CBS and ABC are the live 
media outlets in Las Vegas where I take clients. I don't let anybody go on there unless they're trained. Like we go through a whole program together before they go live. Then they use that leverageable asset to get into media in their other markets and then get to the big markets, Atlanta, Chicago, LA, ultimately New York. May not be appropriate if you're the realtor in St. Augustine or Daytona Beach, but it's certainly great cachet, isn't it? And it can certainly get you written up. Maybe you're outstanding in your market. You've got something unique about you. You use AI, which is a great buzzword today, to find the best li uh, listings, or you use AI to find the best prospects for your clients who have listed their property. That might be a separator for you as a realtor, hint, hint, hint. And using those buzzwords like piggybacking, Michael, on what's current. And AI is here to stay. That robot isn't going away. Just ask Arnold, okay? You're, you're getting terminated. Get and re embrace it. It's here. It's a great asset. At least get current on chat GPT. So when you talk about, um, you know, packaging yourself uh, to present to these uh you know, these bookers and, uh, you know, producers, um, I have to imagine having a almost portfolio of, you know, video content or something you've already done on your own social channels really kind of helps. hundred you know, percent. Put you 100%. up the rung. I am good friends with all the bookers here in Las Vegas of the, of the five networks. I know exactly what they're looking for. And I know exactly what they will exclude and blackball in their minds and in their internal files forever. If you don't have a one sheet, was what you're describing. Like I have a one sheet to get booked on podcasts on yours. I put together my topics, what I'm an expert at, testimonials, my social links that have been vetted and checked to make sure they're not broken. Right. Make sure you have all of that in order because every booking agent is required to Google somebody. And yes, it's a verb. I don't know if you Googled me or not. You were a journalist. You possibly did and saw that, you know, I'm not on America's Most Wanted. They have to check all these things in advance. And that's their duty. It's their job. Expect it. Embrace it. Be prepared for it. It's happening. And they're going to look at your social today. You, number one, LinkedIn. Number two, your YouTube channel. If you don't have a YouTube channel, start one. At least populate with a dozen videos. Reach out to Michael in his former life and create some videos, video content. Because if you're going to be on TV and you've only written content, um, message to market mismatch. You have to be presentable on camera. Do you have your nose hairs too long? All these things have to be clipped and ready before that camera light turns on. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you talk about having your, your social channels, um, I know in Instagram and those kind of things weren't as big of a uh, thing when I was a journalist, but had, uh, an agent, you know, already been producing videos and things on the specific topics that they are pitching themselves to me as, or, you know, uh, somebody that I'm looking for a particular, uh, expert opinion on that topic, and they already have videos that are engaging and driving engagement with their audience. Uh, and I am able to see that on their uh, social channels. That's definitely going to bring them up uh, that, uh, you know, that hierarchy of the people I'm going to call first. And so I think just, you know, not waiting necessarily for uh, your opportunity on one of those networks to start creating that content. You need to start doing it on your own social channels as well. Dig the well before you're thirsty. Yeah. Prepare for the opportunity because my definition of luck, Michael, is opportunity plus action. Opportunity will come up in life. Are you prepared for it? Are you prepared for it? What you're talking about is preparation. Mm -hmm. Be ready because sometimes they will call you to get on to the first team and you better have put in the practice hours. What, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, once you've made contact with, uh, 
you know, these media outlets or journalists or whoever it is, talk to me a little bit about that relationship building and kind of building that uh, rapport with each other so that, you know, you are somebody that they turn to, you know, in a pinch. Cause I know it used to happen to us all the time. I don't know how many people actually know this, but uh, generally if a, sh- if a television show is coming on at five o'clock in the afternoon, we probably had a meeting at nine that morning to decide what stories we were going to pursue. And then we had from that nine o'clock to that five o'clock to figure out how to get our story on air. Oh, it's incredibly important because guess who the booking agents are, the producers, they're people. Yeah. I need to say that softly. So people get it. They're people. They have families. They go to the gym. They do everything you do. They even go to the dry cleaners. You have to, have a relationship with people, comment on their work, their past week before you ask anything. It's a, it's about the rule of reciprocity, and that's the rule of life. You give, and then you got to give freely and selflessly before you ask. Because you can comment about Michael's article in the local Tribune and be earnest, honest, and recite something out of the article. Is it manipulative? You betcha. But you're, you may need to call in that chit at a date when you have something that's timely and is opportunistic. Take a screenshot of your comments on their blog post or on their article and show that you are one of the people, hey, I commented, so that reminds them because they may get multiple comments. Take a screenshot, show the proof, this is me, I loved what you said in your article on July 7th, 2023, when you covered X, you know, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Then they're, you've caught their attention. They're just human beings. Everybody wants an atta girl or an atta boy. Oh. Give it. And that's how you open doors and maintain relationships. It's just about hugging them digitally. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what a, you know, change top focus is just a, a slightly here, but, you know, once you've done, you know, these television appearances or radio appearances, whatever it is, how do you start leveraging that content, you know, for your own benefit once it's aired, you know, once it's already been, you know, aired on the CW or the Fox or whatever, uh, tell me some of the ways that you can start leveraging that to use that as a uh, lead generation tool, or even just a credibility, credibility builder with your own sphere of influence. Well, two things. And I'm going to talk about case studies there, but I'll answer the first part. Use it in everything. Okay, when you send out emails to clients, put those links in your signature. Show, use, uh, here are a couple ways to do that. Very few are going to watch the whole interview. Take screenshots, put it there, recently covered on, and take and show the proof. There's so much misinformation of people commenting on a blog post of CNN, and then they say, I was covered on CNN. BS, I say. If you were on CNN, take a screenshot of being interviewed by Judy, the show host. It could be Jane. I don't know her name. Yeah, yeah, you take that screenshot, then put it in your signature. Put it on all of your marketing materials. Use it. You earned it. People will pay attention to that. They're a little bit numb to all the logos unless there's a link that's clickable and shows that you are actually covered there. And it's about being an integrity. So guaranteed. And that's one way to use it. In your email communication, I'll start building. Also use it on your LinkedIn profile. You can use it if you were to then leverage that to get published or get an article published on Forbes to get an article published on, they're going to respect you because you've used another platform. If you want to get an entrepreneur magazine, I was recently on Fox News or on CNBC, such and such. And I, and I'm an expert in finding the, the quick method of getting your house listed and sold. Answer the pain everybody is seeking a solution for. That's a formula. Second part of your question is how do you get a maybe, what was the, how, how do you get an ROI on it maybe? Yeah, you kind of use that for the lead generation type. Um, okay, so then lead generation is who do you want to do business with? 
Who do you want to do business with? Someone that has no credibility, no prestige, no proof of concept, because we're buying perception. You're creating a perceived value with media appearances. And maybe you are an expert. And if you've written a book, even more valuable. How to get your home listed in the local market, 10 simple steps with a book. Now, their option, and that's the easy way to get booked in on, on television is because you have what is called a unique thumbprint. We all do since the beginning of time. You author a book. No one else has authored the same book as you. It's your thumbprint. It's another way to use that media to then get booked on other platforms to get on podcasts. Make yourself interesting so the host is interested in you. Let me repeat that. Be interesting so Michael Walter is interested in you. I gave you a copy of my one sheet. You looked me over. You're a journalist. You looked over my information before you booked me. You have credibility to look after. If you are a realtor and they, you must establish perceived value and differentiation because there are many people that would love to list a house. How do you get them to choose you? Isn't that the ultimate goal here? Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And be different, be better, be complete, be prepared. Yeah. So one thing I can imagine, uh, you know, maybe some of our listeners uh, thinking is, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, the getting on, you know, more the national shows like the CNNs and those kind of things. And they might think, you know, I just, I'm more of a local agent. I maybe don't have, you know, maybe that's a little bit too big for me, but what would you say to them about, you know, the ability to get on those shows? Cause I know from personal experience, it, it doesn't, you know, just because you might live in a St. Augustine and not in New York city doesn't mean that you can't make an appearance on one of those big national shows. You absolutely can. And you have to earn it in order to bat in the major leagues, major league baseball, you have to go to the minors. And what are the minors? The minor markets. In order to play in New York, which is the ultimate goal, because that's national. There's na there are national newspapers, national publications, and there are regional publications. Start regional, start small, get guaranteed leverage up. To shoot immediately for New York, very thin opportunity. If you don't have all the boxes ticked, as I had mentioned throughout this interview. It's possible. I'm not going to say it's impossible. Oh, I'll, I'll show him, you know. Well, go ahead, sport. Uh, but I'll, I'll, if I'm armed correctly, I'll have more arrows in my quiver ready to shoot the producer in the butt saying, hey, pay attention to me. So I would get, get locked down, get your message clear, be different, be ready, preparation. It's all about wear your clothes. Make sure you don't have any stains on your shirt. Your shirt is pressed, your shoes are shined, your nails are clean. You look the part before you can be the part. You fake it till you make it. And sometimes that's preparation on the local level before you leverage up and get those CNN interviews, which that is possible, but they're not going to risk their international credibility because you want it without being prepared. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, also that, that time that you're, you're putting in to gain that credibility. I mean, if that means that you're spending the time on the local level, well, I mean, that's the market that you're trying to reach anyway. So really get in tight with them. Like that's, I mean, I, you know, we had, so when I was in Myrtle beach, um, I think I had about four or five, uh, different agents that I would, you know, turn to, and it was really, it was whoever was available that day, um, that, you know, we would, that we would use for a particular story. And that was their marketing dollars. They didn't spend any additional money on, you know, billboards or anything like that because we were, we were doing it for them. Well, and if it was giving them the ROI, why change the lineup of a winning lineup? If you're winning, you're getting the W. Why, why move somebody around? Yeah. Um, you know, before I let you go, tell me about, uh, you know, how, uh, what you do to help, you know, prepare, uh, people, you know, for this, for this kind of thing. And, you know, some of your, uh, just additional tips to, uh, to help people gain that publicity. Sure. 
Well, one of the things I provide clients is I'm in Las Vegas and I work 100% with clients that are outside of Las Vegas because that is the number, it's the entertainment capital of the world. Clients from all over, business professionals, many of them are, are realtors like this that leverage the opportunity of Las Vegas being the entertainment capital in a two day period. I can get them on four networks guaranteed and a radio show, live radio show. So they use that to then go back to St. Augustine, to go back to Miami, to go back to Dayton, Daytona Beach, wherever it is that they're from, Miami, Myrtle Beach. Okay. They use that proof asset to raise their credibility because logos are logos and they're guaranteed and back it up with that footage to then use that. I say, guys, you use that now to go back to your local market. I've had multiple, I had a guy fly in last week from a client from Toronto, Canada. He used Las Vegas to leverage himself and to practice, to get very good on camera. I constantly was critiquing him after each interview, got to smile more, got to smile more, show your teeth, prove that you could eat an apple. Ha ha humor, you know, and all of these little tips are important because then He's back in Toronto. He's already been able to get booked. And their media is very different in that country. But he wants, wanted the practice, the credibility to use American media to go back. It was local, local market. And I've had, I had a retired military general. She was 33 years in service. She was a brigadier general in the U.S. Army. She is in Myrtle Beach. She's using that to get booked for speaking engagements. She's using it to gain more press in her local markets. She's using that to get booked on po podcasts. Now she's unique. She's a, a woman who is a, a Brigadier General. She's already rare, but she didn't know how to leverage it. I said, start with television and radio. Now she's getting booked. This was just a month and a half ago she was here. And she wrote a book about her leadership principles. Her name was Twanda E. Young, to add proof to what I'm saying. If you look her up, you'll see that. And she has a monument of herself at her school. Do everything possible. Say yes to interviews. Get on podcasts. Hello? <laughs> it's a great way to practice, to get better at communicating your ideas, your concepts, your takeaway benefits for the listeners and viewers. Yeah. Well, for anybody that's listening to this and wants to, uh, you know, possibly reach out to you and uh, to do, you know, some of that stuff. How can they, how can they get in touch with you? Get interviewed guaranteed.com forward slash meet with Mitch. There you go. Awesome. Yeah. And you, I, I will go over your media with you one-on-one. -on -one. I'm happy to help realtors. As I said, it's a soft spot for me. My mother was a realtor when she was with us and I lived through her pain. I lived through her success and I was able to watch the ascension of her personal brand in the market in which she operated, which was Beverly Hills, California. She ticked the boxes. And the one thing she took away, so you know that I'm sharing the reality, is location, location, location. Yeah, absolutely. So, big. so Michael, thank you for having me today. I hope I was able to share good takeaway value for your, your clients and listeners. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely appreciate you uh, joining us today. Thank you. I want to thank Mitch for joining us today and can say from my own experience in local news media, journalists and television producers are always on the lookout for market experts. Create a one sheet with links to your social media blogs and any other digital content and simply reach out. You might be surprised at the opportunity there are to gain exposure in your own market. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.